Dero insanganya matsiko yuko kwezi no busabane n'Imana binyuze mu masengesho. So the theme for this uh, month is communion through prayer. Intego yuko kwezi no gukangurira umukristo wese kubiga icyaniro cy'amasengesho. And the goal for this month is to sensitize every believer to become an altar of prayer. Ama isomo tuzakora mu turangije uko kwezi nuko gusenga ari inshingano ya twese abakristo tabwa ari itsinda runaka rimwe gusa The lesson we come out with is prayer is for everyone not specific people Umusaruro ugamijwe kuva muri uko kwezi nuko mwizera wese azagira inyota n'icyaka byo gusenga azagira umwuka wo gusenga muri The expected results is that every believer will have the passion for prayer Eh ikitegerezo cy'abantu basenze tuzareberaho mu isezano rya kera ni Daniel wasengaga cyane nubwo yarafite akazi kenshi mu isezano risha ni umumama w'umupfakazi witwa Anna wasenze cyane kugeza yakiriye Yesu mu bonye mu masoye The case studies are going to be Daniel from the Old Testament who prayed even though he was busy with work uh, the other one is Anna who was a widow who prayed until he, she saw Jesus and held him in his in her hands. So this week that we are concluding this today. Ijambo turimo twigaho ni ijambo rivuga ngo ubuzima bw'amasengesho cyangwa se kugira igicaniro cy'amasengesho mu mutima wawe. So today's theme is a praying life or having the altar of prayer in your heart. Eh murabona ndi turagira ubusengero rwacu ubundi tuba duterana no mu byizi tukaryigaho cyane ijambo ariko reka tubashe kugerageza gutanga samari yiri jambo yiki cyumweru as you know we don't have a place to fellowship during the week we would have spent more time reading it and studying it but let's give a summary for this week dero turarebera hamwe ubuzima bw'amasengesho cyangwa se igicaniro cyo mu mutima we are going to study the praying life or the altar of prayer in your heart. Let's read Luke 2:36 to 38. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Noneho amarimya kamirongu inani nine arumukfakazi. Yahora gamuru sengero aramnyimana. Yiyirizuhus asenga kumanywa nanijoro. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Muri uwo mwanya nawe araza shima imana avuga ibya Yesu abibwira bose bari bategereje gucungurwa ku Yerusalemu And coming in that instance she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in, G- in Jerusalem Reka turebe muri Daniel igice cyacu cyagatandatu ku murongo wa 11 Let's read Daniel 6 610 Maze Daniel yumvise ku rwandiko rwashyizwe ukuboko ajiwe Kana madirisha inzuye yarakinguwe yerekeye Yerusalemu akomeza kujya pfukama gatatu mu munsi asenga imana yi akayishimira nkuko yarasanzwe agenza amen Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem the window opened towards Jerusalem three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed giving thanks to his God just as he had done before Let's start with Daniel and then talk about Hannah. Daniel, Daniel was very busy. He had so much work more than all of us combined in this, uh, in this house. In the kingdom of Babylon, Daniel yari Daniel was second in command. He was very great. 
According to the kingdom of Babylon, but it was actually the Persian kingdom in the time of Darius. They changed it to be the Medes and the Persians. They had a great kingdom from Asia to Africa. From India to Ethiopia. He was like the prime minister, except for the king, he was the one in charge of everything. And he had great honor. And he was also very busy because he had to combine all the reports from all the countries and bring it to the king. And it was a difficult time like not, to, not, not like today because there was no social media there was no technology people had to bring messages in person and he had no time to sleep Daniel this Daniel had put a schedule for himself. He said, whatever happens, there will be an altar of prayer in my heart. I will not allow my heart to dwell on anything else. And he had many enemies who fought against him. In this uh, chapter 6, Daniel they started to plot against Daniel since the day he ascended. And he got to a point where the plotting was too much. And even the king signed the decree to kill him. The king himself knew that Daniel was being mistreated. But he had no power to speak on his behalf. Because they had trapped the king. They said, King, we want to worship you alone. And they knew that Daniel would never worship him. And the king said, that's fine. And they said, we will no longer worship any idols. We will only worship you for the whole month. They brought the decree. And they said, sign for us. Anyone who prays something else will be put in the lion's, lion's den. The king never knew that that decree was for Daniel. No, no. Then, and then they signed, he signed the decree. But Daniel, they knew that he prayed in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. They had examined his life. And they found that Daniel and prayer was inseparable. That meant in him he had an altar that never quenched. And that's the altar that they accused him of. But they forgot the one whose altar it is has more power than them. The king signed and they brought Daniel. And they say, we caught him. And the king said, no. Daniel, you have brought Daniel. Daniel, and they say Daniel cannot die. And they and they said, no, we will not allow you to die. 
they brought the constitution of the Persians and the Medes, and they say, even you, the king, cannot undo a decree. Bivuga muri constitution go ichu ngami ya fuzi taugi hinyura na ubenti ya baki subishi nyuma. In the constitution, he says, that once the king decrees, even the king himself cannot remove the decree. Gwara mubura niri jorodios. And he fought for him the whole night. Dirana dirana. And it was impossible. And they told him it is the Medes and the Persians. It doesn't change. He looked at the ground. And he said, Yes, go and kill him. A man who served him very well. A man who was never corrupted. A truthful person in the country. He loved God and the king. And he loved to work. And he's going to die and the king cannot save him. If you have an altar in your heart, the one you made the altar for will save you no matter what. They threw him in. And then they told the king, and it was a big pit, and they told the king to sign with his, with his ring that no one will remove the stone. And it was in the, in the night. They threw him inside. And the king signed over the stone. And he went home. He couldn't sleep. And he thought about Daniel. And he found out what people plotted against him. And in the morning he woke up alone. He removed the stone. And he, and he called for Daniel and asked him, did your Daniel, God save you? Daniel, servant of God. He said, servant of God, Daniel. The God, the God you serve, did he save you because I couldn't save you? And he heard someone from the bottom of the pit say, yes, your God. Hallelujah. And he responded, he saved me because I did not sin against you or him. He said, he sent his angel and closed the mouth of the lion and I slept in peace because I did not sin against you. And the king decreed to remove him. They took him out. And he took all the people who were plotting. Even the wives who did not counsel them. Even the children who were laughing at them. And he said, bring them into the pit. The Bible says, that the lions were so hungry that in such a way that they, the lions tore them apart while they were still in the air. The altar of prayer. Prayer. Play, play with anyone you want, but if you get to someone who has an out of prayer, be quiet. Gossip about anyone. But someone who prays, he has an advocate he speaks to in the secret. This was Daniel. <laughs> we'll continue with Hannah. Because what I want to teach you is like this. This is just a historic perspective. There was a daughter of the family of Asher in the New Testament. 
yitwaga Anna her name was Anna yari umukobwa w'umugabo witwa Fanuel she was the daughter of Fanuel igiye cyarageza rarongoma it got to a point where she got married iburasirazuba in the east umukobwa yarongorwa gafite imyaka 14 ni imyaka 15 a, a girl would get married at 14 or 15 years old. If the miyaka chumi ni tanda to niri indu inu muna na vera gumiwe. At 16. Don't kwa vera jeans. Yera gumiwe taki. At 16, 17, 18, it would have been too late for them to get married. Aruko abu bungu bungu na mirongo ine na kibazo na mirongo itano. Ni mugi kibazo. Ta ku gumiri gua kufa. Na ba na ba na ba nui miyaka mirongo ine indu vera rongo rwa hano na. Icho si choki kibazo muri isi ya none. Utaza agirango e wara tins. Na agu tinda ku kibazo kuri isi. Today's uh, girls can get married even at 40, at 70, and they can even give birth later. So it is not a problem. The Bible says, This daughter was a prophetess. Was she born as a prophetess? I don't think so. Among the prophets of old in the New and the Old Testament, the last one was John the Baptist. Why are they bringing this woman? They have brought her among the numbers of the prophets. There are reasons. The Bible talks about the bad history she went through. She was of uh, Fenuo of the tribe of Asher and she was of great age. She was the daughter of Fenuo in the tribe of Asher and she was of great age. When she got married she was with her husband for 7 years and he died. She was with her husband for 7 years and he died. Let's do a, some math. She gets married at 15. She has a husband for 7 years. She's now a widow at 22. At 22 years old. At 22 years old, your daughter is still in your house and the others in this time were already being widowed. The other thing about being a widow in Israel, you continue to belong to the in-laws family. If you were lucky, a family member, a family member would redeem you but if no one was available to redeem you, you remain in their family. In today's world, a, a person can be a widow and after a few years they get married even with children. But back then it wasn't the case. Imagine having a person who is 60 years telling you, I have a wedding next week. That exists now. It, it happens in today's world. But, but the Bible world, it wasn't this, this way. When she got widowed at 22 years old, she got widowed at she transformed her life. And she said, I have no other rescue except from God. I'm going to go to the temple of God. The Bible says, She spent 84 years old, oh, she was 84 years old and did not depart from the temple and serve God with fastings and prayers night and day. She said that the sorrow I have, the rejection, 
The problems I have, no one else will solve them. I'm going to go to the temple of God and I will turn my heart into the altar of prayer. Anything evil that will come into my heart will be burned by the fire of the altar. I will not allow anything to come into me for that will cause me to have diseases that I shouldn't have. It will cause me to lose my mind. So I'm going to put a burning altar in my heart so that every bad thought, every bad news will be burned and I will keep my peace. She was 84 years. Take 84 years. And remove 22. Uh, plus 22 years. 106 years. The day Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple. They found her there. They she was the first evangelist and the first prophet to say that this is Jesus even before the angels. This is the one that Jerusalem was waiting for. This is the Messiah that you were waiting for. You cannot know this if you don't have the spirit of prophecy. If you are not in prayer. The heart was rejoicing. She was always in the temple worshiping God. Fasting, praying day and night for 84 years. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, they included her. She was recorded in the Bible. If you put an altar of prayer in your heart, there will be a book where you will be written. Whether it's Daniel or Anne, they have altars in their, in, in their hearts. And this altar helped them to commune with God. What is the altar in short in, in summary? The altar is something that you it is a setting where people prepare wood and fire and the smoke goes up and they also offer sacrifices. In shepherd's terms, the altar is the altar is the so the altar is a fire 
that uh, the shepherds would put wood in so that the smoke would chase away the flies. And once the flies are chased away, the cows will be resting and eat their food and remunerate their food so that they can have, uh, they can bring good milk. So the altar or the, uh, or the cow. Allows the cow to have good communion with the food so that it can use it properly. That's, the, that's what happens. Spiritually or religiously, the altar is the gate that connects the one who offers the sacrifice and the one who receives the sacrifice. Whether it's a spirit, whether it's a demon, whether it's God. So a long time ago, they used to put meat or things in a hut so that it can be offered to spirits that they are trying to connect to. And that was considered an altar. Abraham when Abraham got to Canaan, he found that the nation was full of demons. And everywhere he would go, he would have an altar to connect him with God. Pero, eh, and that's how he established altars in Canaan. Everywhere where the altar was, there was a window that connected earth and heaven. So the altar of the heart. It is communion through prayer between you and your God. Can someone pray all the time? Yes and no. Yes, why? Because the more you pray when you are sleeping you can tell the Holy Spirit to pray on your behalf but when you are awake even though you are working you can pray in your heart and continue to commune with God that will prevent you from having bad thoughts and bad energy you can pray all the time through the Holy Spirit no someone cannot pray all the time I'm talking about physical you can get to a time where you, where you are praying. at that time you are not praying but the one who's used to it they will tell the Holy Spirit I'm going to sleep continue to pray for you Holy Spirit, continue to light the fire. Or I'm with people who are important. I will not be able to pray and concentrate. Or I'm working. Holy Spirit, continue to pray as I'm working. Holy Spirit, continue to pray as I'm working. The Holy Spirit is your partner. You can tell the Holy Spirit, pray while I'm doing this, and He's going to ask you to take over after you finish. And you can be in prayer all the time when you are working with the Holy Spirit. So my teaching that I want you to understand and other people to understand today is not just the altar but I will talk about what fights against the altar. Why does someone not have that altar in their heart? What prevents people to not have the altar? When you understand this, you will spend these four 
holy days praying. Donc, what causes someone to not have the altar? What allowed Daniel to pray among enemies? And he continued to love them and work with them. What allowed Anna to continue to pray despite being a widow? The Bible commentaries. When, they, when you read uh, the Apocrypha book, they say that this Anna was the mother of Mary. Those are the traditions, yes. But whether it's her or not, she is a mother who suffered. But refused the sufferings. She refused to always dwell on her suffering. But she chose to always worship God. From the day she became a widow, she saw in God a faithful husband. She became a, a housewife in the house of God because God was her husband. Amen. Amen. Don't you think she had She had 22 years old. But she got to a hundred and six. She had refused last few thoughts in her mind. She established an altar. What is their secret? That's what we are going to do. What fights against the altar of the heart? This is what the Bible calls. You will hear many things. But this one that I'm about to about, it is the root of all of them. It is called the root of bitterness. The root of bitterness. Repeat the root of bitterness. In the book of Hebrews 12.15 The root of bitterness Hebrews 12.15 It says That means Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by this many become defiled. If we had the whole entire week, I would, I would talk to you about leaving the grace of God. But I will not talk it about it. Well, I'm not, I'm going to to you because we have a short time. I will talk about the root of bitterness. How can someone fall short of the grace of God? I won't talk about but it. it. But how is this root of bitterness? The root of bitterness. Daniel, Daniel he will be told. You know Eve is about to plot against you. This is an example. And he works with Eve. Because of prayer, Daniel, Daniel when you meet, he will hug Eve as if nothing happened. Not because of hypocrisy. Mm -mm. No. It's because that word came into his heart and burned. He got to a point he would see that among the people who plot, Eve is among them. He would say, you too, you are plotting against me, Eve. He would say, yes, you are uh, uh, 
you, you broke the decree of the king. And he will say, that's not a problem, Eve. May you continue to uh, enable to allow, to obey the king. He never in his life he never in his life allowed a root of bitterness or bitterness in his heart many problems we have are caused by bitterness people came as an example say Anna you are a widow we know who bewitched your husband and she responded, what? It is so and so. He's the one who bewitched my husband. Oh, hallelujah. And she would say, Hallelujah, he's in heaven. In her, she always praised God. Really? Hallelujah. They bewitched, they poisoned your husband, and you are saying hallelujah. And she said, Yes, very much. So. He is before God. And I will join him one day. She never allowed gossip to enter her mind. This autumn. When, when you have bitterness in your heart, the altar cannot be established. But there are other things that take place that I'm going to share. Many people became great are the ones who hear things but don't dwell on them. They come into one ear out It's not because it doesn't enter. But they come out right away. They have no time to keep useless things in them. If someone tells me, you are short, would I have a problem with that? Or if you say, I am tall, is that a problem? You are ugly. I know I'm handsome, is that a problem? Say you are, you are wicked. Yet I have a good heart. The issue we have is the issue is when you allowed something to come into your heart that creates a, a, the root of bitterness in you. When you discern it and remove it right away, your heart is going to be at peace. The root of bitterness produces two kinds of obstacles in our heart. Two obstacles in our hearts. The first one, it brings what's called thorns. It produces thorns. Second, it produces the heart's foreskin. If you don't remove the root of bitterness, it will create thorns in your heart. Secondly, it will bring a big and large foreskin to cover someone's heart. Let's look at Jeremiah 4. Jeremiah 4, 3 to 4. Two things. Thorns and the heart's foreskin. Jeremiah 4, 3. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. Verse 4. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your hearts. 
Let me talk about the thorns first. Jeremiah says, Do not sow among thorns. He also says, to circumcise ourselves to the Lord and remove the foreskins on our hearts. What does it mean to not sow into thorns? What does it mean to not what does the prophet means by sowing not in among thorns that though he does not say so the roots which will spring up into thorns do not plant your good resolution into a heart filled up with the roots of thorns but first rake up the soil and clear it of nauseous germs and then sow the seed which will grow up into a holy life what does this when your heart has the root of bitterness and it has stones all the good resolutions you have, they start from the heart the good thoughts you have they start from your heart anything you are going to do starts from your heart this is what you may have a resolution thinking that it's a good resolution but because it emanates from the root of bitterness it is actually something bad and the end is going to be bad Another, an example. I ask a ride from Jose. Or Jose has a wife. And the wife say, are you going to give me a ride? But Jose says no. Instead of begging and asking, please take it. She would rebel and she would walk to for 12 by foot in her heart she wants to show the husband that she's angry who is hurting as they are walking who goes among us that can cause an accident the anger the <laughs> The, the anger is causing the wife to walk. It is actually out of a thorn, a bad idea. But the other person is going to be okay. And the consequence of the action will come further down the, the road. When we were still children, we used to rebel and refuse to eat. I'm not going to eat. <laughs> Yet you are going to die of hunger. Because sometimes 
ya kongeye kuvuga none ho navuga ndarye yavuga na none bati no ihangane gato abandi ngo riko murakomeza mu mubembeza mu mureke ukumva wabica siko byagendaga eh nuko bimera sometimes you refuse to eat as a child and the your siblings will say okay take the way, take away the food but you would want someone to beg you so that you could eat there are other siblings who take your food and eat it in front of you. What have you done when you do that? It is something that you do out of the root of bitterness. Something but the consequence will be big. this root of bitterness is very evil the thorns that pierce our hearts they don't allow our good resolutions to come to pass Jesus spoke about this in Matthew 13 7 and verse 22 what did Jesus say? Matthew 13 verse 22. Izindi zigwa mu maho ngwa maho araru araruka araruka araziniga. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Matthew 13 verse 22. Kandi usani zibibwe mu maho uwo niwe wumva ijambo maza maganya yihise nibihendo by'ubutunzi bikaniga iryo jambo diryere. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this word and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Thorns are the cares of this world. To take a long time thinking about you. You say, uh, did I accompany people on this earth? Did I really give birth? Why do I not get married? Why do I not go to school? God, what did I do? If you continue to dwell on those thoughts, you are growing thorns within you that will block or kill your life. The diseases that people have today, many come from thinking ill about themselves. But if you don't think ill of them, and when those things come, you direct your mind to God. You re- reject the diseases that were coming. The, the sorrows of this world. They have caused people not to have the ultimate. Even the one who has it. It is not the art of praise. It is the art of sorrows. Someone who go into prayer and insult and blaspheme God from Monday to Sunday. And he say, now I am rested. I have told him everything that's on my mind. It is amazing. The Bible says in song, even in the time of the flood, God was still sitting on his throne. Even during your sorrows, God continues to be God on his throne. There is nothing you can do that can shake God. The only thing that can shake him it is to praise him in all the things that happen. If you praise him in all times, he raises because what you have done, you have rejected the root of bitterness in your heart. There are some people who worry about all things and nothing. They worry about their child in school, when the child comes home, when the child wakes up. Let those things go and give them to God. There was an uh, elderly mother who came to my my office. 
I saw her and I saw many problems in her. And she was old. She had grandchildren and grand grandchildren. And I said, uh, Mother, what problem do you have? I see you have many sorrows in your heart. She said, Listen, how can I not have them? How can I not have those sorrows? When I was a girl, I used to worry about getting married. Then I got married. I was very happy. And, and I started worrying about giving birth and then I gave birth afterwards until the seventh child and I said to myself I'm going to rest now and when I saw, when I saw my children grow up I started worrying about them getting married but okay and then, and then the children got married. And then I became so worried about one of my children being barren. And I saw all of them gave birth. And now they have children. And I look at my grandchildren and I worry about their safety. And I, said, and, and I asked her, do you have issues or worries about your grandchildren and she responded I don't even sleep because of that I looked at her and I was shocked they are well they are not poor she comes to uh, church with a car. She has a good uh, elderly <laughs> but she's about to die because of those worries the grandchildren. And she also has a grandchild. A great grandchild. And I asked her about her great grandchild and she said that one is actually worse because he's now two years old and he hasn't spoken. I don't sleep because of him. And I asked her, and she said, I spent the night thinking about our history or our genealogy, and I don't know if we had anybody who was deaf. How can you counsel that kind of person if they come to your office? And the other amazing thing, they were always in the prayer morning church. They are always in the morning prayer at church. And I asked her, Mother, what do you pray when you pray? <laughs> she said, I am always showing God those grandchildren. <laughs> she wakes up early in the morning to bring the grandchildren before God. And I asked her, do you have time to worship and praise? And she said, it can be a routine, but most of the time I'm praying for my grandchildren. So when you dwell on yourself too much, you will de develop the root of bitterness. Allow me today to ask you to forget about yourself a little bit and seek God. <laughs> and the Bible says the selfish desires of this world. <laughs> what are the desires? <laughs> of the, world? the things we run after <laughs> that cause us to work hard. <laughs> they are foolish desires. <laughs> the Bible says <laughs> that the uh, Money has wings. If you run after it, it will fly and go away from you. The money we are chasing. The money that we chase after, it will let you catch it, but then slip out of your hand. And one day, it even flies away. It's like, it's like a bird that they have asked you to keep. And they ask you not to kill it 
and to not let it go. Niko mafaranga kuja mwako ntunje kani ntun tumbike. The money tells you when it's in your hand it's like that bird it says don't eat me and don't release me. No gira chano rakicha kanyoni kabati. If you hold it too tight you will kill the bird. No regeza karaguruka. If you let it go it will fly out. Je bibili kambira the bible tells me ngoshaka ubwami bw'Imana ibindi bizakurikira seek the kingdom of god and everything else will follow ngoshaka amafaranga sibi it is not bad to uh, to run up to kubanza gushaka imana nibyo byambere but you must seek god first kugira igicaniro cy'Imana muri wowe nibyo byambere to have the altar of god in you is the first thing ibindi bigakurikira and other things follow amen amen <laughs> amen oh hallelujah Hallelujah. Uh, Hosea 10:12-13 says, "So for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you." Break the fallow ground in your heart. Menagura. Break them. Kuraho. Remove them. So that the seed that is about to be sown, the altar that is about to be placed, will have a way to be established. Amen. Amen. It will be able to grow. Umusi tuziga guhima na abanuba chunibzanyo. The day we learn to entrust our things and our people to God, we will be at peace. But until we do so, we are going to make a mess. Those times must come. <laughs> the day, the day I, gradu- I graduated, I was about to go and study away from my house from my dad he had kept me so much and he kept me to himself he was using a reference from my other brother I will do something small and he remind me of what my brothers did and when he would uh, punish me he would punish me with no mercy when I say beating you guys don't understand back home your, your parents would beat you and you would ask yourself if they are really your parents so one day I asked him while he was no, a teenager and I was a teenager and I was because I was strong I saw that if I push him he would fall I asked him how long will you continue to beat me and he would say until I am sure that you are not like your brothers and we were two in the house and he was beating me with a stick he was a very skinny person and I was a young big guy and I thought to myself if I push him but he would beat me and I asked myself what should I do I let him beat me and he really hurt me and I was wounded even after he beat me uh, and he saw that he had gone too far he asked me to go to sleep he showed me the bed because I was, I was bleeding and I asked myself why can I just not escape and I asked myself, where am I going to escape to? And then, another time, I had to go to a place where he would not be with me at the university, and he would not see me again. To leave me, to live with me, he would not be with me. 
I had lived with him the way my ring is with my finger. I never knew how to play with other kids. Uh-huh. You know. I never, I never learned the neighborhood slang because I never went to play with other kids. That's how I was kept. Later on, God explained to me why <laughs> there was a small root of bitterness that was there. I remember the day the root of bitterness left me. I had been praying for the whole night in the Equatorial Forest in Bengamisa. And I saw a light in the tree. It was like 3 a.m. in the morning. That's when the light came into my heart and the root left me. And I started feeling like I love my father and God explained to me that the way he raised me was for my benefit. And he also had a root of bitterness because of my brothers and the things he did to me were very bitter. This is what he told me. He said, you are going. I have sown a seed in you. I have prayed for you. I have raised you. And now you are 18 years old. Go. I am no longer with you. You will eat what you want. You will drink what you want. You will sleep where you want. You will sleep with whoever you want. I give you permission. Go. I was going to separate from in Bukavu. He was going back to the mountains and I was going to go to Kisangani. That word entered my heart. And I never understood that all the years I lived with him, he had made me or transformed it into an altar. When I got to the university, all my other friends, on Saturday, they would all go to seek prostitutes and drink alcohol. These were children of pastors. And he, they told me, this is what happens on Saturday. And I was the only one left in the campus. Next, they told me, we are going to take you by force. And I will pray and they will forget and what happened to me is this. The thirst for the things of the world had left me. I had nothing of it. I went to, I went to visit to a few girls that we were going to school with. When I got to their room, there were two of them. They locked the door. They locked the door with me inside. And they said, you are not going to leave. I, I had not understood what they were saying. When I understood, I knelt down and prayed. When they saw me praying, they said, go out, you are not a man. Why am I saying this? When you have been an altar or you have been offered as a sacrifice, the deceitfulness of the world. They have no power over your life. They come, but they have no power. Amen. 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 To raise children, we must raise them in God. When we raise children, we must be careful not to raise them out of our roots of bitterness because your reactions when you have a family, many of them come from your experience or your background. 
reka nje gatoya kuri uyu muzi umuzi ni ikintu ki what is the root umuzi the root ni ikintu kitagaragara it's something that is hidden ni chihish it is hidden ni ikintu kikwirimo imbere kigukandamiza it is repressed kandu ni ikintu chihariye cyawe ukunda guhishira and it is private ikindi ni ikintu cyuzuye hose muri wowe and this thing is stuffed in you nokuvuga ngo kikurimo imbere it is within you ariko abantu tibakibona but people cannot see it uwo muzukurimo that root that is in you, even your husband you, even your wife cannot see it because you make it private you hide it yet it is in you you are unseen this root nevertheless feeds our soul informs our mind and fuels our motives fuse our motives ikintu cyose ugiye gukora nico kigusunika anything that you are going to do this root is going to push you if it muzi utagaragara muri wowe akenshi usaba abantu kugaragara ariko wowe ukarebera hariya na remote control when you have an unseen root you ask people to do things in public and you manipulate them away from them kuko umuzi wo gusharira because the root of bitterness ni kintu kitagaragara it is something unseen but pushes us to do things that we have thought about a bitter root poisons us a bitter, bitter root causes poisons everything we do a bitter root causes us to poison all the people we meet tugomba gukomeza dushakisha imizi ire yo yose yo gusharira kuko itagenzuwe neza ivamo ibimera bibi bikwira kwiza urupfu no kurimbuka muri twebwe we must stay on the lookout for any root of bitterness because left unchecked it will spring up into a noxious weed spreading death and destruction iyo umuntu afeta sharira muri we when someone is bitter within them agasanga uwo agasanga abantu baravuga nk'umuntu and they find some are people talking about someone ikintu cyambere avuga we the first thing that person says ni kimumanura it is to bring the person down bashobora kuvuga ngo eve afite imodoka nziza this they can say eve has a very nice car mukamuba na wakaze muravuga ibi and he will come and say what are you guys talking about eve afite imodoka nziza eve has a very good car ata ati buri wawo barabakenekera and he, the, the person will say a long time ago in their family they were poor people muzukuri really you are not talking about the background of eve you are just saying that they have he has a nice car and if you want to the first thing that will show you that someone has a, the root of bitterness is the everything they say bring down people iyo muri abo bavugaga harimo na ufite usharira ahitavuga ngo eh uramuzi kugira ngo ikiganiro gikomere ariko udafite umuzi wo gusharira ahita aja kwindi topic ico nico kizakumenyesha kudiringa nawe afite umuzi usharira ni umuntu ta apresia ikiza cundi muntu among the people who are discussing if if another person has the root of bitterness they will support the evil thing that they are talking about they can buy ingero ngufi gusa I'll give you a bibi. small example. Kandi ni huta ngo ndangize. And I'll go fast. Mugiye cha Daudi yari afite abajyanama benshi ariko hari babiri bari bakomeye ku ngoma ye aba babiri ngiye ko bababwira. Under the reign of David he had many counselors but there were two that were great. Umwe yitwaga Hushai nundi witwaga Ahitophel. One was Hushai another one Ahitophel. Aba bagabo bombi these two men reba mu ngoma ya mbere 2737 Let's read 1 Chronicles 27:33. Ingoma ya mbere 27:33. 1 Chronicles 27:33. Aitoferi niwe wari umujyanama w'umwami na hushayi w'umwaruki yari inshuti y'umwami. Ahitofer was the king's counselor and Hushai the archite was the king's companion. Hushai yari yari inshuti. Hushai was a friend. Aitoferi yari umujyana. Ahitofer was the counselor. Aba bombi these two ndagira ngo ubyumve. Igihe cy'inama 
when it's time for counsel, David will ask for a hit of faith. But he will go with, with Hushai. Hushai was a friend. A hit of faith was a counselor. Okay, let's go. Hushai was a friend. Hushai was David's friend and he was also a counselor. 2 Samuel 15, 37. 15, 37. So Hushai, David's friend, went into the city and Absalom came into Jerusalem. The Bible actually contains the entire life. The words of the Bible contain our livelihood every day. Hushai, Hushai was the friend of David. Who was Ahitophel? Ahitophel was the most trusted among David's advisors. The most David trusted Ahitophel like a man trusts their own hand. He was one of David's closest friends and confidants. And he was also a close relative. But Hushai was was just a friend and a foreigner, a gentile in Israel. And he was also a confidant of David. A good part of David's success as a leader was due to his skill at selecting good people to surround and assist him. This man Ahitophel. He was a very smart person. The Bible says that his counsel in Israel was like, likened to God's counsel. All the counsels that he would give will come true. to the point where they say Ahitophel and God are not different. When he says something, it's true. David, he trusted him with all his heart. Hushai was a friend of David. But in secret, Ahitophel was the one. This is what happened. There was a time Ahitophel told David, I want to retire and go. And he asked what happened. He said, no, don't worry about it. I am going to my own uh, And he went to Gilo in his village. Under Hebron. And David asked himself, what is going on? I used to counsel with this person. Someone who has my secrets. And David said, let's see what happened. But what happened? In the second book of Samuel 15, 12, Absalom then Absalom sent for Ahitophel the Gilonite. He had left and went to his village Gilo. David's counselor. He came from the city, his city Gilo while Absalom was offering sacrifices. And the conspiracy grew strong for the people with Absalom continually increased in number. Absalom went to offer sacrifices and he brought many people. What happened? Absalom wanted to do a coup d'etat to his family. But, 
But Ahitophel resigned way earlier. And he went to live in Gilo. In the he left the royal palace. Okay. Then Absalom called for people to come and have a feast. It wasn't a feast to offer to God. The prince has invited people. People unknowingly came. When there were many people. Ah. He then called for Ahitophel. Ahitophel Because Ahitophel was likened to God in his counsels. Absalom and Ahitophel and Ahitophel knew each other in secret. There were things they would talk about. They made plans ahead of time. Let's continue. Hushai and Ahitophel reacted differently during David's trials. Both of them are close to David. One is a friend. And another one is a trusted counselor. David has a problem. The way they are going to behave will show us who has the root of bitterness. Hushai yakomeje kuba indahemuka ndetse no mu buryo bwibanga kuri Dawidi mu gihe yakoresheje amayeri mu kugusha Absalom amugamburuza inama zikomeza Ahitophel byatumye David atsindwa. Hushai remained pardon. Hushai remained secretly loyal to David betrayed Absalom cause cause by opposing Ahitophel's plan and proposing in its place a scheme of his own which actually gave the advantage to David. Ahitophel took a leading part in the revolt of David's son Absalom and Ahitophel's defection was a severe blow to David. As they were trying to plot against Hushai was among them. But Hushai had remained a friend of David's secret. They made all the plans. And then Hushai told Absalom, I trust Ahitophel. And David must die. But today, Hushai said, this time around, Ahitophel is wrong. And Absalom took the counsel of Hushai, and Ahitophel knew very well that Hushai's counsel was against him. Ahitophel yamenye neza ko Hushai amuhinyuje akoresheje amayeri menshi. Ahitabona kaga ingabo za Absalom zigiye kugira bituma yiyambura ubuzima ari yahura. Ahitophel recognizing that Hushai had outwitted him foresaw the disastrous defeat of Absalom forces and took his own life. Uyu muzi wo gusharira wavuye muri Ahitophel. Where did this root of bitterness start in Ahitophel? Ufet iyo habaye ikibazo tukiganire tukivugane no mugore tukivugane no mugabo tukivugane no mubana no mukorana ngo mubwizanye kuri mu mutima mu mutima haguma mu kintu none ho wase kiba kibiryare iyo utakibwiye nyiracyo ukazengura kuri ruhanda ukaje gukibwira ubundi uyu nawe akibwira undi byagarukwa kuri uriya bikaza ari bombe hakaburwa ngo hagati yabantu kandi ntacyo bapfa karakantu gato the problem starts when you have an issue with your wife or your husband or someone and you don't discuss it and clear it yet you are you go around and tell other people and it is going to become even worse there are others who can talk to you or you can talk to but in their hearts they don't remove the root of bitterness why because there was no altar of prayer. those roots will grow Umuzi wo gushara muri Ahitophel wagize igiye kirekire ariko wihishe nta muntu wamenyaga byafashe hafi imyaka igera kw'icumi 
the root, uh, the bitter root of Ahitophel continued to remain for a decade. Donc, yara nungulitse muriwe. In other words, he was so bitter within him. Ariko, but, tiyakura muko kunungulitse. He did not remove it. He continued to walk on it. He continued to sleep with it. When you are bitter in your heart, the person who pleased you before angers you when you see them. When they give you help, you think that they are bringing poison. Perceptionic. What is the perception? It is to see something in a different angle, in the wrong angle. When you love someone, Museka. and you laugh, and you say you are too short, they don't get wounded because you are friends. They, say, they will tell you, why don't you give me buy something from me? But if you don't feel good about that, and they say you are short, it becomes a big deal. That's a perception. One word. You can hear it in different ways in different times. What causes this? It is the root of bitterness. Now we are going to pray. Remove all the roots of bitterness, reconcile with God and man so that you can be one with God. The root of Ahitophel, the bitterness, kept growing daily until he watered the dreams of revenge. There are many causes we must examine and find out why Ahitophel became this way. Because the root then one day it sprouted, became a huge tree that dropped rotten fruit, poisoning thousands of lives. He committed suicide. And he left Israel mourning for many people. What happened? He refused to cope with the given situation and to forgive. And it was also pointless because David had already been dealt with by God. What is the first root? The visibility of David's relatives was constantly diminishing. They felt neglected. You see that he brought many counselors. And he caused David's reign to expand. When they talk about David, and when you have a big kingdom, there are other people who are not your relatives. There are other foreigners. And you start looking for competence instead of relationship. The Benayas, he became the commander of the army. Where is that boy from Capset? And they started analyzing David's entourage. Who are they telling? Ahitofel. They are telling Ahitophel. Ahitophel, you are the close one. And he would say, I don't even see him anymore. He goes with Hushai always. And every time I try to be private, he brings Hushai around. The root of bitterness because they were not given positions. If you start building your company or your ministry, anything, there are key people that you start with. But the more the work expands, you will need more strength. So when people have the roots of bitterness in them, they are not pleased with other people. Not because they hate them. 
but because their, their influence is diminished, the people who fought against David, they are not the Benjamin. They are the Judah people. And Ahitophel was the one The more they diminished their influence, and David was famous in Israel, and they said, what about us with the Judah people? There are none in the army. The great counselors, it's just Ahitophel among all of them. We fought for this man. And Ahitophel will complain and say, I brought all these counselors and now they are above me, but God will revenge us. But this is the way Joseph did. When his relative came, he told them, Pharaoh has a when Pharaoh comes to see you and he asks you what you do, don't say that you are politicians. Leave, leave that you. Just say that you are shepherds. He will give you a cup of land and you will eat, you will uh, multiply and not, nobody will bother you. And that's how Israel expanded. But but if they had been placed in positions, political positions, they would have died. What I'm trying to say is that thing it caused Ahitophel to bring to grow bitterness in him. Imagine someone who goes to fetch water unwillingly, they will fetch back water. What David was sending him to do is not what he was bringing. Or he would go. And before he says what brings him, he would say, he would go and spread rumors. And that's how people who have bitterness roots are. They spread rumors even though they have no reasons to do so. Because the one I'm telling you, is not of Judah. He doesn't know the issue with the Judah people. But everyone I go to, everyone I speak to, I will leave bitterness in their hearts because I am bitter. Another thing is this. The lack of visibility for the Judah people. It is not worthy that the rebellion was cradled in Judah and seems to have found there its chief strength. Another thing that brought bitterness in them. Expectation. It is to have expectations and not communicate them. Don't communicate expectations. Expectation. 
tugomba kugendera kuri expectation zawe ngo nizo zizagerwa ukomunika uvuga ibiri mu mutima wawe ni imana iravuga ngo mumbwire ibyo mukene there are some people who have expectations and they don't communicate them you will get up because it's your birthday and you think that they are going to sing for you and you never told anyone even god wants us to communicate what we desire kuba rero bene bene yuda bari bazi ngo niwe bazakora tibikeze babwira David ariko bari bazi ngo bizikora tibishobora kwikora abantu baraganira the people of judah expected david to put them in great positions and they never communicated that to david kuda communicate bzadusenye imitima igiye kinyo the lack of communication has wounded our hearts kugendera ku kintu gusa umuntu yibwiye ngo cyakagombye gukorwa you just go and uh, and assume that things are going to be done nyuma y'umwaka after one year tugiye muri israel after when we went to israel umuntu yaranyongoreye someone came to me and said arambuye ngo hari umuntu wagize anniversaire and they said there is someone who has a birthday yo tugeze muri sale ndamuhagurutse when we got to the room uh, i asked him to stand up arishima cyane and that person was very happy nyuma y'umwaka and after one year aza kundeba he came to me and said ngumwaka wa wundi nagiye israel nti bavuga birthday yanje nagize umwaka wose mbabaye tavuga ntabyo narinzi bati numva bugomba kubimenya donc yagize umwaka wose anyanga tuba mu rusenge natera haleluya ta niyakiraga ndayipinze nagira kugira ndabyanze donc umwaka wose kubintu nge ntarinzi for one year that person told me when we in israel you did not wish me a happy birthday and i have been angry and bitter against you for the entire year i would say hallelujah in the church they will not respond uwo munsi umuntu arambuye nibo yari yarabimenye icyo kibazo simbiza arambuye ati kana kafite anniversaire c'est vrai donc tugize no kana kafite anniversaire tumuririmbire yabanje kuba ngo ninde wakubwiye ndavuga no pabamenyeshe guko hari anniversaire yari ngo wi undaruhutse naringiza umwaka wose mbabaye umwaka yewe nta makuru ndabwiriza nditerera mbiri byuya ngira gute siza makuru ko mwene data ababaye expectation iyo utavuze ikintu ntutekereze ko bagukorera icyo utavuze ubwo numuzi ubugiye wenyine gukwega mu mutima wawe having an expectation and not communicating it will cause you to be bitter if it's not met cyane aba mama especially mothers aja muri sarakagira ngo urabone umutwe we they go to the hair salon and they expect you to see their hair style agakomeza gukimbera kunama wowe ndi ndabyurebe they continue to go by you and before you so that you can compliment and they come to the scratch the hair you can see the hair gitabo muri computer cyangwa areba makuru yaraga ngo ariko nturebe uyu mutwe kandi wa ureba ntumenye icyerwa ngo niki urabona ndasokoje neza ati eh wasokoje neza sheri ariko nyine ubugira ngo uhikure ariko se umuntu agiye muri salon aragira ngo uracunga nako yakoyemo amameshi aracunga nako yakoyemo donc izo expectation nizo zituma abantu bagira ibibazo mu buzima bwabo the expectations that wives and women have to notice every little change you do cause them to have some type of bitterness because no one can keep up and pay attention to every detail rero bagabo mujye mumenya ama expectation y'abagore ya kirika so husbands you better know the expectations you should wake up umutwe niba ntacyahindutsemo you should wake up every morning looking to see if nothing changed on their hairstyle ni mutabikora don't do so azabi miziyo gusharira mu rugo mishi hari giye ubwira umudamu akagusubiza nabi naho niki ejo ndi wavuze ko yasoko genese kandi ntabyo waruzi Sometimes you talk to your wife and she answers you angrily because you didn't compliment her hairstyle and you never kind of This is the other thing that happened. Urufu rwa Uriya. The death of Uriya. Gwa koze kuri Ahitofel. This touched Ahitofel. Kuberiki. Why? Uriya Betsheba. Betsheba yari umwana wa Eliam. But Sheba was the daughter of Eliam. Eliam, Eliam, yari umuhungu wa Ahitofel. Was the son of Ahitofel. Nokuvuga ko Ahitofel yari sekuru wa Betsheba. Ahitofel was the grandfather of Betsheba. Muri Samueli wa kabiri 11:3. If you read this in 2 Samuel 11:3, Bibiliya yavuga ngo Dawudi amubonye atuma kubaririza uwo mugoro wari we. Maze umuntu aramubwira ati si Betsheba mwene Eliam umugore wa Uriya umuheti. Uri ari umunyamahanga ariko abaye mu Israeli So David sent an 
inquired about the woman and someone said, is it not Bethsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Uriah e, was, a, was a foreigner. Eliam yari umuhungu wa Itofel. Eliam was the son of Itofel. Samuel wa kabiri, makumi abiri na gatatu, mirongo tatu na kane. Second Samuel 23:24. Ndabizi ko ibi bintu yabo ngo yabzaye 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 bibarambira ariko hari gihe bitufasha. Sometimes you get tired because of the genealogies but this helps us. Ngo na Elifati mwene ahasubai umuhungu wa Munyamaka na Eliam mwene ahitoferi wigilo igilo hamwera. Elifele the son of Ahasbai and the son of Makakai Eliam the son of Ahitophel the Gileonite. Umusi Daudi yichisha Uriah. The day David conspired to kill Eliam ninde. Who is Eliam? Numuhungu wa Ahitophel. Is the son of Ahitophel. Yari muri zanga bo 33 na zitatu za parakomando za Daudi. He was among the three Eliam. commandos of David. Umukobwa we his daughter yari Bethsheba. Was Bethsheba. Bethsheba was the wife of a commando called Uriah. So the, the son-in-law and the father-in-law they were in the army of David. David killed Uriah the son-in-law of Eliam and Ahitophel learned about this and he kept it he wounded him he has killed the son-in-law of my son remember like the, the grandchild the, the uh, elderly woman who talked about the grandchildren he was wounded and this added on everything that had happened before he was the counselor of David. He did not go to David and say, You have done evil. Because David took Bathsheba as a wife. That means his son is now. His son is now. Uh, Eliam. Eliam is now. Yes. 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 And Ahitophel is the, the father of the son. Of the they were not different because he was still the same family. But because he had the root of bitterness, he did not see that in this age. He did not see it as an answer to their request of being prominent in the royal palace and it was hard to manage. But he left his job and resigned. And they asked Ahitophel, why didn't you come to the retirement? And he said, I'm, re I am retired. I am retired in Gilo but the king is looking for me he knows that I, have I am retired that time is when he started talking to Absalom Absalom did not just wake up in the morning and try to overthrow his father the person who had the bitterness the bitterness is a true a tree that grows and it has fruits that feeds poison to people they, they met with Absalom and they say how can the son of Bethsheba and Bethsheba is the great Salomon. who is Solomon how can he be the king yet you are here? this wife who just came back retirement and Absalom will say you are the ones who counsel my, my, my father the king and Absalom said no I am no longer a counselor I'm, a, I'm retired and he said I will support you to hear Ahitophel supporting him Absalom 
Absalom said, what do you want now? And he said, call people and I'll show you. That's when he gathered a fist. And he called him from Gilon after 10 years. After 10 years. Yet he had that in him. David had already asked forgiveness. He was completely blameless before God, but Ahitophel kept it in his heart. And he told everybody, Ahitophel is going to come. When he got there, but okay. He said, call for a thousand men. Blow the trumpet. Now you have become the king. And your father, I know his weakness. I lived with him. All the commanders, I know how to live. And when people hear that I'm with you, they will leave David. David heard that Absalom is with Ahitophel. He told his people, let's go and let's not fight. Let's flee. And the Job said, let's fight. And he said, I will not fight with my son. I will not fight with Ahitophel. My close cousin, the one I loved, I cannot. Let's go. So they left. And the army came. When people the, the sons of Benjamin who were bitter screamed and said, now he has left the throne and they came back. Absalom, David crossed over. He went Kidron over the mountain of Olives. He went down the, the mountain with the army. He had become elderly. And everybody screamed. And they screamed, Absalom, Absalom, Absalom. And he's with Ahitophel, Ahitophel. And David and his people slept on the mountain. And Ahitophel told, listen boy, I'm going to show you how to turn people against David. And when he hears the news, he will never return. Go in the public. Let them put tents and call the concubines of your your every wife. Sleep with them in front of the public. Imagine that council. The root of bitterness in the heart is evil. If you don't remove bitterness first, you will get to a very bad place. You do, you do things that are not to be done. Bring them. And after you sleep with all of them in public, they will reject your father. And they will know that his authority is false. Why was he doing that? The way he did it for my, to my daughter, Absalom, Absalom thought that Ahitophel was helping him to overthrow the father, but Ahitophel was seeking for revenge. That's the issue of working with someone who is bitter. They will th- you will think that they are doing it for, for you, but they are doing it for themselves. They did the hard feasts. They were not feasts feast to rejoice. They were feasts to blame and uh, cause people to reject David. They despised David. And David knew how to fight. 
he refused to fight against his son and to when he slept in the Mount of Olives, Ahitofel told Absalom, once you have uh, caused everybody to reject the I'm going to give you another counsel. That night, Hushai, Hushai, he found David he was taking food on the donkey where he had slept and he said David even though they reject you I will not leave you I will follow you and he told him don't follow me I will ask you one thing the only evil person is go back and go become the counselor of Absalom. What Ahitophel say, uh, do the opposite. Say the opposite. That's how you are going to save me. And you are prevent, you will prevent me from shedding blood. So Ushai left. And he went to the feast he said I, I am following the king of David but he was the secret friend of David but Ahitophel continued to doubt about him Ahitophel was very serious Absalom called for a meeting and said now I have become king what should I do Ahitophel said I'm going to go home Ahitophel said, call for a thousand years. In this evening, they will be watching. They will catch David because he's tired. I know him. They will catch him because he spent the whole night walking. They will catch him. And you will bring him tomorrow to kill him. That's how you are going to get the country. Absalom said, okay, who shall I speak your counsel? He said, I believe Ahitophel in everything he says. When he gives a counsel, no one can give an And we know that his counsels are like those of God. But today he has missed the mark. Let me tell you. Your father David, since he was young, he has been a warrior. David is even though he's old he's serious he is he's watching for you and all those drawers the they know that you will attack them this night if you try he will kill you David is a warrior I know him he is a friend of God. I know his strength but I know his strength but I'll give you a counsel. Wait for the morning. He will think that you are no longer coming. And the soldiers will relax. That's when you're going to catch him. And he said, this is a good counsel. Hushai, you are a man. Ahitophel looked at him. He said, you are a child. He knew that Hushai came to fight against Ahitophel. Absalom. Absalom. You are listening to Hushai. And he said, what Hushai is saying is true. I know my father too. But that night, if they had gone, they would have killed David. He was tired and his feet, his feet had swollen. He could not walk. And Ahitophel looked at him. And he discerned what brought Hushai. And as a wise person, he looked at the future. He saw that Absalom will lose because he knows David. Another thing, he knows that David will return. He turned around and got on his desk. He went back to the And that day, he went under a tree and he committed suicide. He died. That's how Ahitophel died. What killed him? 
the root of bitterness he did not remove uyu munsi abantu ntibapfa ngo tubabone ariko ubuzima bwabo bugenda bupfa imibereho yabigenda ipfa amagwe yabagenda ipfa imitekereze yabigenda ipfa ntibagitekereza beyond ibyo batekereza kuberike ntibadirinze n'imizi yo gusharira muri we ndagusaba ko muri iyi minsi mirongo ine kura mutuzi twose umuntu wikomaga mukure muri we Timana ni wekene. Uwakuvuze nabi babarira wikomereze ti wapfuye uracyahari. Uwagusetse ti yatumye utabawe. Tosha ndani ya roho wewe ni imana yawe utangira ubuzima bwa. Today people don't die physically but they die within little by little. Their marriage die, their businesses die, their belongings die little by little. Today as we begin the 40 days of fasting and prayer, remove all the roots of bitterness within you. Umenye igihe cyose uri muganira n'umuntu niba atari mu muzi wo gusharira discern every time you are speaking to someone if they don't have the kuko niba uri mu nawe urahita wandura uhita ubyumva if they have it you are going to feel it ariko igihe cyose but every time uri kumwe nabafite imizi sharira when you are with people who have bitterness jumubwira tell them twahindura topic can we change the topic katuganira ibi let's talk about something business business Let's stop talking about people. Maria. Mary. Let's, let's just talk. When you do that, you protect your heart. And you keep your heart of prayer. May God bless you. May you have good 40 days of prayer. And may God lift you up. Praise you, Jesus. Ya kira ngamila kuiha onde kuno ili mazi ngamila. After a short time, Hallelujah. When David returned, he, he wrote Psalm 41 and 55. Those are the Psalms that he wrote. Talking about the life of Ahitophel. He said, even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, lifted his heel against me. In Psalm 55, 13, 12. Those are those are the Psalms that he you may ask, yet he was saved. Why did he do it to me? Because he had something that even though he was someone in the church who hurt you, let them go, release them from your heart. God is giving you another opportunity to start afresh in these 40 days and 40 fasting. <laughs>
I come before you receive you as a sacrifice. Oh, my heart, Hallelujah. I remove every root of bitterness from my heart. Remove all the thorns. The full skin that covers the heart. We light the altars in our hearts. Amos kwa boshemuri tuwe. Those we bound in our hearts, we release them. Heal the wounds that we had. Remove the thorns in our hearts. May the altar be built in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. 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 Build an altar in our hearts. An altar of praise. Fasting and prayer in every day of our lives. Let the spirit of prayer fill us. Let us serve. Let us praise. Let us call upon you. Bring back the joy in our hearts, in our families, in our children, in our relatives, in our brothers, in our neighbors. Lord Jesus.